Quick question. 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 Hey, everybody. Welcome to Quick Question. I am Travis. And I am Jonathan. Jonathan. Yes. Quick question for you. Shoot. Are you easily startled? <laughs> um, <laughs> I've, I've been easily startled in the past. But is it a character trait? I yours? would say that I am, uh, I am an on-guard person. I would agree with that. I would very, very much agree with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of always ready. You know, it's been uh, growing up the way I did. It's been a weird family thing that we all love scaring each other. My family, too. Loved it. And you know who hates it? <laughs> Tell me. My wife. Randy. <laughs> she hates it. The only time she has ever punched me in the face. When you scared her. I jumped in front of her. And you know those snap caps? I threw them at her feet and she just went, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> she started punching me. Dude, yeah, like my family, it's just like this innate thing we always do. We always scared each other. But you're um, you're mostly a family of boys, right? Is it a boy thing? Oh, we didn't just, it, that's just a boy thing. I mean, everybody kind of got involved. For example, when, when I was a kid, my little cousin Jason lived downstairs, and uh, he was horrified of Friday the 13th. You know, just like, I mean, he, we're talking. The film, the not film. the date. Yeah, you yeah. because the, yep. the main character, the killer, is named Jason. And Oh, right. So, uh, and Jason, I mean, he had to be maybe nine eight nine years old seven eight right in that area and uh one so he was in the second floor rear apartment and there's a little hallway that connects when we were in my grandparents apartment in the second floor front and there's windows in my grandparents apartment at the front and we go jason come here look at this look at this look at this no and he came running looking out the windows and he's like what looking out the windows and he turns to his left where my grandfather's bedroom was and my grandfather was sitting on the edge of his bed wearing a hockey mask oh no (laughs) Oh, Jason, no. <laughs> he literally, he was going, ha! Like, he was so scared he couldn't scream. Urine? Was there urine? He, then finally when it did come out, it was like this earth-shattering scream. And he like, like he, I think we, tar- you, you know, tainted him for life. I, literally, we scarred him for life. But even my mom, I, I remember coming home from school one day, and my mom was always at work, and I came home early, and I was just kind of like playing on my, my little keyboard, my piano. And I heard this like this knock so I like go to my door and I open the door and there's no one there I'm like well now someone's who the fuck and I'm like looking down the hall and thought it was one of my brothers and it was no one so I close the door and I go back to my piano and I hear and I'm like what the what the fuck is going on here and then I look and I slowly see my bed my bathroom door creaking open very slowly and my mom jumps out and screams like ah I'd like to scare me I almost pissed myself so everybody in my, in the Sadowski household kind of got involved in scaring everybody else. That's amazing because I, I uh, not the same because uh, I didn't have a piano and uh, uh, or anything like that. But um, <laughs> it wasn't a piano; it was like a little Casio. Oh, keyboard. oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I still have that. I still yeah, the, yeah, the one that has the bossa nova setting and it, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I uh, my family's way of showing affection was to scare the shit out of you. Like that was I like love it. I do too. I think I think the reason why I love being scared or scaring people and being scared is because the reaction is so primal. <laughs> it's, it right. is such a true and well, honest reaction. I, I enjoy being scared also when I know that I'm going someplace to be scared or when I know that that's part of what's supposed to be happening. Like just every day in life, something terrifying me that I wasn't expecting because that that just happened to me the other night. I was walking home. Uh, we have a, a bit of an encampment in our area. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, I was walking home, and it was it was horror movie lighting. It was one in the morning. All right. I like to walk late at night. I'm that You're kind a night of walker. I'm a, I sure am. <laughs> <laughs> You're a night walker. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, it's no shame in the game. Uh, I'm walking home, and this guy with like, the cart with the squeaky wheel, like the two, two wheeled cart with one wheel. That's kind of wobbly and squeaky. like the shopping cart thing. Yeah. He like is going the opposite way of me and takes an interest in me and loops around and starts walking behind me. Oh no. So I just hear, <laughs> and it's like, and he's a slow, he's a slow man with a lot of cart items. So there's no way he's going to catch up to me. Yeah. That's in what they said mind. about Jason Voorhees. Exactly. <laughs> So it's got, it's got the, you know, it's a little foggy that night. The street lamps are kind of orange and there's a lot of shadows and there's this squeaky wheel following me. So I start speeding up my walking, start speeding up, start speeding up. I keep, the wheel won't stop squeaking. It won't. And it sounds like it's getting closer. And I'm like, this sucks. Like I'm, I'm at fight or flight. Yeah. So the only thing I have on me 
is my aluminum water bottle. Deadly. Which, which I am now Deadly holding. Weapon. But I'm holding it like a bat. I'm holding it like a mini bat. So I and it's got a little bit of water in it, so it's got some weight. So I brandish my yeah. water bottle. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing how so many things become weapons. I had a yo-yo once when I was walking and I was like, I could throw the yo-yo. <laughs> So I'm walking and uh, I'm like, okay, he's, ne- he's not going to catch me. He's not going to catch me. And I get walking faster and faster. And then I hear right in my ear, excuse me. And I turn around and there's a dude on a bike with a giant dog. And I raise up the, the bottle and I go, ah! and I have to stop myself. <laughs> I kind of like half From sw- bludgeoning yeah, this man with a water bottle. Half stop. <laughs> And then he just rides by with his dog, <laughs> stops under the bridge that I have to walk under to visit his other hobo buddies. And then we had to have a conversation about how I almost hit him with a water bottle. So I'm also... Oh, uh, by the way, stop. Uh, this this podcast is brought to you by HoboBuddies.com. Hobo Buddies, <laughs> you're like family here. <laughs> <laughs> They're like the Olive Garden. <laughs> <laughs> the worst dating site. It's so bad. Are you homeless? Are you lonely? Oh. Are you looking to meet the one person who can turn it all around? <laughs> Sign up. Go to Hobo Buddies. It's like adding insult to injury as if they all have computers. <laughs> yeah. So bad. <laughs> or hobos only. <laughs> they get together. H date. Yeah. I ain't looking for nobody with no damn house. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I almost bludgeoned a homeless man. Yeah, I love scaring people, dude. I, I really do. I love, like, every once in a while, Melissa. You're a big Halloween guy, too. Love. But I'm just saying an everyday practice of mine is to scare Melissa at least once a day. But she also, hates like Brandy, it. hates it. Hates it, hates it, hates it. We'll just be, like, sitting around watching, like, cartoons. And I know where I'll just go. Ah! <laughs> and she'll, like, scream. And she'll, like, set me. She's like, why do you do, why do you, why do you do that? And I go, because your reaction Tickles me. Yes, the same reason I do it to it Brandy. Just, I thoroughly enjoy watching that reaction. Yeah, Brandy, uh, my wife, is a very slight woman. She's a tiny, tiny, there's there been times where we're doing laundry and I'm like, did we have a kid? Because I'm <laughs> folding her clothes and they're so little. Um, but, she, but she has giant reactions. Brandy's cheating on me with a young girl. <laughs> <laughs> they probably met on Hobo Buddies. Um but uh, I, I love scaring her for the same reason, that her reactions are so disproportionate to her size. Yeah. Like, they're just enormous. Now, here's the thing that my parents used to do. I mean, I mean, th- this was, tra- you know, traded. So I have, a br- I have a younger brother. So it's my mom, my dad, and my younger brother and me growing up, four of us. And we equally did this to each other. When someone's in the shower and, like, really kind of getting into the shower and being relaxed... You give them about five minutes so that the warm water is really taken over. Then you get an really ice sink in there. Yeah, you get an ice cold gla- glass of water and you dump it over the side oh, and yeah. just freeze the shit out of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this was a sign of affection in the Clark household <laughs> growing up. So when I started dating Brandy, who is now my wife, I was like, I'm going to pass on this lovely traditions are meant yeah, to be kept alive exactly. folks. traditions are meant to be kept alive i i i uh, i scare because i care and uh she hated it absolutely hated it yeah broke into tears and said why would you do this <laughs> <laughs> no 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 i love you it's because i love you don't you understand i love it i, I and like being to me even when people do that to me i like as much as i dislike being scared I respect it because if someone is good enough to scare me and make me jump, I'm like, oh, that was a good one. You know? I've scared you a few times unintentionally. You shit and fall in it. You knowingly do what you do. Sometimes, like there's been a few I'll times. I'll open that, yeah. my door and you're standing there like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll text you and be like, hey, I'm walking Which over. Which is weird too because yeah. I have cameras around my house and you like somehow don't even appear. You're like a I chupacabra. Don't show up on cameras. You're like a, yeah. you're like a vampire chupacabra. Mm, much like my acting career. I just don't show up on camera. <laughs> it's not that I'm not working. I'm just a chupacabra. <laughs> so hard to get chupacabra work. <laughs> so amazing. But I also like, and, and aside from like this, like I said, it's a good jolt. You know, I love that good jolt. Yeah. I love the adrenaline punch. Oh, afterwards you're like yeah, up. Better than coffee. I remember one time I Well, scared, you hate coffee, though. I don't like coffee. I, you know, I don't mind an espresso every now and then. And it's not like I don't hate, I don't hate coffee. I, you know, I'm just not like a... It's the, it's the biggest problem I have with our relationship is that I can't geek out about coffee with you. Yeah. 
not, that's not too bad of a problem. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's fine. Hey, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I mean, I made you a glass, a glass of a uh, cold brew that took 24 hours to make, <laughs> but I'll just throw it. I'll throw it away. You'll you drink it. Like, I'll drink it. Melissa will drink it. And I'll go and get coffee with you. I just, I don't like, I'm not the kind of guy that's like, wake up in the morning and have coffee. Oh my just God. Just do my thing. I, I wake up in the morning and I have orange juice. I have an orange smoothie I know, I've watched morning. your Instagram stories. I know what you do. Oh, I do. You I do? So, yeah, you made, a, you made a smoothie this morning. You I made a pre-workout smoothie. I make it every morning. And you have like amazing oranges growing in your uh, folks, backyard. Folks at home, I'm going to tell you, probably my best quality, my orange tree. I would disagree. <laughs> The hell with you. Those oranges are great. I wouldn't say that's your best quality. It was hyperbole. I don't care. I am a big Jonathan Sadowski fan. I I'm go a, around. I'm a TC fan. I'm oh. a big Travis Clark fan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big Travis Clark fan. So, but real quick. So anyway, another funny story. Um, my mother, like a way that she almost convinced me to stop scaring her. So uh, in her bedroom between like the bed and the wall, there's about eight inches. So I laid sideways and slid into the eight inches. So I'm like, I'm like on my right shoulder between the bed and her wall. And she was getting ready to go to bed. How long were you in there? I have a good 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, she was getting ready to go to bed. And all I did was stick one hand up and I went, brah. And she screamed so loud she farted. Like it was, (laughs) I mean, it was horrifying. It was horrifying. And I got up and she's like, you little son of a, and she's beating me. And I'm, mind you, I'm like in college at this point. And she goes, go on. She goes, keep doing it. Give me a heart attack and kill me. She goes, you'll have to live with that one for the rest of your life. <laughs> wow. I like, yeah. I was like, maybe I shouldn't scare my mom anymore. But scaring anyone to the point of flatulence is a high watermark. Like that is, <laughs> that's the ultimate. That's because the, you know that that is, that's completely involuntary at oh, that, that point. You know? t- totally primal. Yeah, because now they've gone from totally frightened to embarrassed, back to frightened. Like it's a what a what a oh, roller coaster. That didn't embarrass my mom. Oh. No, no. Yeah. I'm thinking of me in that situation. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean uh. my mom always says if it ain't paying rent, get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God. <laughs> I can't wait for you to be my mom. You've Skyped with her. I've, I've, yeah. yeah, we FaceTimed a couple of times. The yeah. first night we ever went out, you called oh, your mom right. in like the her. middle of the night and she's like, What the fuck do you want? <laughs> what, happened? <laughs> what happened? What happened? What's wrong? <laughs> yeah she seems like a fun lady she's uh, wonderful yeah. she's wonderful yeah well, are pranks a big thing then too if you like scaring do you like pulling pranks yeah like, yeah because uh i i mean i i've pulled okay uh you people can't see this but the desk that we're at uh recording this podcast is uh made from a tree that used to be in my front yard it's a good looking desk yeah and i'm really happy with it and it turns out that the tree was a nightmare and it made made some great furniture for me <laughs> free lumber uh, i didn't make it i hired somebody i'm not that handy but uh we were we had we had planned on doing this a very long time my wife and i and i um i took to facebook this is now two uh, almost two and a half years ago so it was it was April first, uh, twenty fifteen. April Fool's Day, right? So I went on there and I said, uh, "My wife Brandy and I have been planning this for a long time, and um, we uh, we are we're finally confident. And now that we know uh, that it's been further along, we're now finally confident in saying we're expecting. And just so many likes, oh, yeah. so many compliments, oh, yeah. so whatever. And I gave I gave it I didn't even give it that long. I gave it ten minutes. And I went, sorry, Facebook cut me off. Expecting delivery of my custom desk from the lumber that used to be from the tree that we made. <laughs> Amazing. No one saw that comment. For two years now, people come up to me. Congrats on being a dad. You're kidding I, me. Still, to this day, people were calling my mom from out of state, from out of country. Congrats on being a grandmother. And she had to go, it's a, it's a desk. And they'd go, what? <laughs> they didn't oh understand. God. So I went to go work for... Um, this one guy who hires me every now and then to do comedy, uh, he books clubs in like other cities. And I was in Reno performing at the Laugh Factory there. And he goes, oh, I haven't seen you for a while. Congrats on being a dad. This is a year later. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, no, no. I was, uh, it, was, it was furniture related. And he goes. I mean, at, at some point, you just got to start saying thanks and taking gifts. I, <laughs> 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 just, just start stockpiling. <laughs> you know, one of the best, one of the best pranks I've ever heard um, came from my buddy Walter. We were all in college at the University of Illinois and um, we had a friend, Camilo, Camilo Rodriguez. 
um, who is from Colombia. Okay. And we are all big ball busters. You know, we all loved fucking with each other. Well, Walter creates a fake email account, Camilo Rodriguez at hotmail.com and composes an email to like 200 of us. Oh no. Hey guys, it's Camilo. Uh, I hope summer's treating you good. All this stuff. I know I bust balls a lot, but, uh, I'm actually writing you uh, about something uh, pretty bad. Oh, no. He said, uh, recently there have been lots of floods in Colombia, and my family's village was hit. Uh, any canned goods or clothing you can give oh, no. would be greatly appreciated. Oh, <laughs> and no. Camilo has no idea this happens. Right. So he actually comes home one day, and there were boxes of canned goods <laughs> and clothes <laughs> on his front porch. And he's like... Oh. What, what the, the hell is yeah. all this? <laughs> there were sororities taking collections. Oh my god! And arguing over who was going to be the one to give him the check. They were arguing over who was better friends with Camilo. <laughs> it was brilliant. Oh, was it brilliant? We still laugh about it. So we still it, laugh about uh, uh, it. I love that it took on this own life. Um, people, you, uh, we still have the email chain. Like every year, Walter kind of sends it out, kind of bumps it, it yeah, yeah, on Facebook. Just be like, to this day, greatest prank of all. Time. It was brilliant. Like just sheer brilliance. How did he react to it, though, Camillo? He started wearing some of the clothes. No kidding. <laughs> no. He didn't have to go grocery shopping for a year. He had the best time. Best prank ever. I don't know. I mean, that's not even important. It's just... Well, to me, to me, the fun thing... Of, You're missing the point of the prank, Trav. But to me, the fun part of a good prank is the aftermath. To me, it's like, and then how did it resolve? Like, it's great to pull... I don't the, even know. I honestly don't even remember how it... I, I have no idea. I mean, it just... it's It's... I just focus on the, the glory of the prank. You know, I when I proposed to my wife, I pranked her. And, uh, I did the same with Melissa. Did you? Yeah. Because I, I tracked down Brandy. She was in a meeting all day at her job. And her job is weird, and I can't legally discuss it, which is a weird thing, which makes people think that she works for the CIA, but I'm not allowed to discuss it. It's the FBI. It's the FBI. <laughs> She's really Comey's daughter. Um I uh, she was in meetings all day and I had to uh, try and get her to come out of uh, a meeting because I wanted to propose to her, but she didn't know that. So for whatever reason, it was just very difficult to do. My mom knew that I was going to propose to her. So not only am I like nervous about doing this, my mom's texting me every two minutes. Did you do it? Did you do it? Did you do it? Did you do it? So I finally go, this is in my mind. This was going to be so funny. I go there. It's raining. It's one of the rare raining days in uh, Southern California. And uh, I have this ring in my hand. And I'm like, I remember being really nervous that I was going to drop it and it was going to go down a storm drain. And I was going to be like, you want to get lunch? And I just like totally <laughs> just forget well, it. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? Yeah. So I walk up to her and I go, hey, uh, thanks for meeting me. I, uh, I've just been thinking a lot. And um, I'm not really in a place in my life where it makes sense for you to be my girlfriend anymore. And I don't, I don't, that's not what I want. Ooh. And she's like, and I could see it in her face. And later she told me, she was like, are you fucking ki- You made me come out of a meeting to, to break, break up, up with me. me. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, because I want you to be my wife. And I like get down on my knee and like, I'm getting, I mean, I think I'm in a puddle. I'm literally in a puddle <laughs> holding this ring up. And because of the fact that she thinks I'm breaking up with her and because of the fact that I spent seven years, that's how long it took me to propose to her saying, I'm never going to get fucking married. I don't need a piece of paper. I did that for like a long time that now I'm here really doing that. She's just confused. She just doesn't know what to do. And so I'm just holding a ring and getting wet and she's making no sound. She's not saying yes. She's not saying no. She's just looking at me. And then she just goes. (laughs) And I went. I don't know how to take that. <laughs> I'm going to need a hard yes or no one way or the other. <laughs> amazing. And she said yes. And then we, she cried. And then I gave her the ring. And then uh, we got married. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I did. I did. A, a, well, I don't know if mine was a prank so much as a mislead. So I did. Mm, uh, I classic had Classic misdirection. Yeah. I had uh, um, my family coming down, my mom and dad. And uh, I had Melissa's parents and her sister come to uh everybody was at a taping for young and hungry okay and it was under the guise that it was just our parents meeting for the first time they'd never met oh wow yeah so uh the very last scene of the taping um i had written a fake scene and i had the camera uh, uh, all the cameras were set up to record what was going to happen 
So uh, there's a scene where I come in, and I don't know if you guys watch the show or not, but Emily Osmond plays my love interest in the show. And uh, I go to her character, and I said, her name, character name is Gabby. And I said, Gabby, uh, you know, I know we've had this back and forth going for a long time, but if I'm going to be honest with you, I've been in love with someone else for a very long time. And Gabby goes, since when? And I said, since October 2nd, 2010. And that's the day me and Melissa met. Aww. And you see Melissa's face just drop. And I go, and she's here right now. And I got up and I walked out of the scene and I pulled Melissa on stage in front of the live studio audience. All the lights went down, a little disco ball came and, and I gave him a little speech. Yeah. You can see it on YouTube, actually. <laughs> I mean, I want to marry you after that. That's, uh, that's adorable. Yeah, it was pretty cool. That's amazing. I like I like blindsiding people. Here's the, You know what's weird, though? It's like, I love blindsiding people with stuff, but I'm also a horrible gift giver. Really? Yeah. But you're so thoughtful. But here's my problem. If I buy someone a present, I can't wait to give it to them. Oh, I, yeah, I hate that. I hate that. I, like, I, I can't wait. Like, like, it was so difficult for me to sit on this ring for so long before I had actually other proposed. Right. Like, if I buy Melissa a Christmas gift, I'll be like, I got to give it to her like the, like the week before. I'm the same way about gifts, both giving and also, too, if I know you got me a gift. And this has been a huge point of contention with anybody who's been in my life for more than peripheral. Part of the fun for me is to see if I can guess what you got me. Before I unwrap it. And I I realize that that's fun for me and extremely not fun for most people who give gifts. <laughs> like, uh, over there... Uh, Are you work- like the kind of guy that takes like 20 minutes to open a present? No, no, no. I mean, like, spe- Christmas and like birthdays where you know there's a gift coming. Like, if it's a surprise gift, I just kind of open it, whatever. But if it's like, okay... All right, we're still a few weeks away from Christmas. I'm gonna guess you got me, and like, and I, it's like a, it's a mystery. Like I know that if I just wait, I can unwrap it. But as a kid, I used to go and take an exact. Have you ever guessed it right? Oh my god, all the time. I, I have to stop. I have oh, to stop. I would hate that. Yes, exactly. I would hate that. <laughs> that is the reaction I have come to realize. <laughs> I have, would hate that. Yeah, I um over there in one of those guitar cases is this dream guitar I've wanted that literally took two years to get made. Because the, it's a one guy who who makes it from start to finish, and it takes doesn't take two years to make it, but he's two years booked up. And hey, I just realized something. What from start to finish, guitars have a finish on them. Ah. That is usually the last step in the process. That's correct. From start to finish. To finish. Carry on. So uh, <laughs> I've been wanting this guitar for years, and uh, um, it's expensive, and it takes a long time to get, and just wasn't something that was in the cards for a while. And um, I guessed it. I straight up guessed that that was what she got me for Christmas. And it I would be furious. It was like just pulling the wind out of the sails. Like it was like, that's what that was the turning moment for me. It was like, oh, part of the fun of you giving this is seeing me get surprised by it. It's not fun for me to go. I know what you got me. See, yeah. And I love I love uh, I'm all about the post gift discussion. <laughs> I love it. You know, <laughs> like doesn't Chris Hardwick host that? Is that a, he knows everything that fucking You're right. So no, I'm if all it's about, a post show, he, yeah, he hosts does it. it. Yeah, I'm all about the post gift discussion. Where like not the post gift wrap up. Oh god, post gift wrap up. Oh, god, I don't know how I feel about that one, Trev. I, it's not my strongest one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm all about talking about like you know after you open the gift, I'll be like, what did you think it was? You know, sure, yeah, or hear that, you know, but yeah, I, I'd be kind of. Yeah. You know what? Just open the damn gift. Survey says number one answer. <laughs> that is how most people Just feel. open the damn yeah, gift. Right. But as a kid, Christmas and in Christmas, because that's the only one you get to really leave the presents out for. I had this system where I would wait for my parents to go to bed. I'd take an exact. Oh, knife. yeah. That everybody did it. I'd. But I mean, like everybody did it. I'd get Nintendo games and beat them and have to rewrap them and then act surprised. Oh, you actually played with the yeah, gifts? Yeah, I did everything. Yeah, I, I, I would go take them in my room, unwrap them, use them for whatever their intended purpose was, then put the tape back over the tape. You're so, a horrible child. Well, I was a teenager. Okay. I, I think that's fair. I think teenagers are not great people. They're figuring, <laughs> yeah, they're f- figuring things out. <laughs> yeah, they're figuring out their morals. Apparently, I had very loose morals as a teenager. I no man. I mean, my brothers would open gifts and with the exacto knife and stuff like that, but we'd never play with them. We just kind of like open enough where we can peek inside and know what it is. Oh no! Th- see, to me, the fun was slicing it and then perfectly resealing it so you couldn't tell. Like perfectly rewrapping it and resealing it. You so should have you- been a surgeon. You should have been a doctor. Um, I don't think. 
I would want to go to a doctor who was just good at unwrapping video games, <laughs> like, <laughs> but resealing them, resealing them. I should have been. Yeah. I could have been the, the approach surgeon. There you That's go. That's a guy who just cuts things. Is it? Yeah. I've never heard about this. Oh, well, then you <laughs> let me tell you, you haven't lived. You haven't lived till you've had to have numerous people sign off on who's going to cut you first. That's How, do you like going under? You've had lots of surgeries. Do I like it? No. Cause I know why I'm doing it. If it was something I could, if there was a, you know, it would be an interesting business. I love it. But if you could just go like recreationally get put under and not have anything done to you, I'd do that. It's great. Is that ethical? No. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Why don't we ask Doctor What's His Face, who is Michael Jackson's guy? Well, you know, all that like there's lots of stuff do, like doing. There's lots of people doing that stuff right now, like with the whole, uh, you know, like the 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 nurses on the go kind of thing where. Where if you're hungover, there's nurses that will come to your place and like hook you up to an IV and rehydrate you and right. pump your system That's full of different than getting. But it's still you're getting hooked up to an IV. It's like, but you can do that with vitamins too. I mean, people IVs. Man, I've had I've I, I had an IV before you came. So over. where do you draw the line, Trev? I think <laughs> I, I think I think in anesthesia <laughs> at local anesthetic <laughs> <laughs> or general anesthetic. So how many times have you been under? Let's see. I've been under for my appendix. You, have your, you had a, a appendectomy? Appendectomy in college. Yeah, I thought I thought I was really hungover because it was homecoming weekend. And uh, <laughs> wait, wait, wait! You thought extreme appendix pain was well, a hangover? Well, at first, I was just nauseous. I was really nauseous. Oh, okay. And I was like, all right. And I like, I couldn't throw up. I just like the idea. And you're like, shut up, liver. Well, and then, <laughs> and then I was like, this is getting worse and worse. And then I tried to eat something, and I couldn't. I couldn't eat. Just like there's no appetite, and like. I couldn't even get myself to swallow any food. And I was just trying to lay, kind of laying around. And one of my buddies across the hall in my, in the old frat house, uh, go Lambda Chi Alpha. Um, in the old frat house was like, dude, that's you your. You lived in the frat house? Oh yeah. With like 63 of my best friends. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know 63 people. <laughs> oh yeah. It was, it was, it was fucking wild, dude. Like there was at one point, I think there was like 65 or 70 people from the ages of 18 to 21 living in a house together. Did you guys have like secret handshakes and all of that shit? I can't tell you. All, all I know about frat life is either what I casually It was observed. amazing. It was utterly amazing and I recommend everyone to do it. Don't put up with the bullshit of hazing and stuff like that. Like my house didn't haze. Find yourself a house. It's awesome. You couldn't tell me if there was a secret handshake? I, why would I tell you that? Well, I thought you couldn't tell me what the handshake was. Like, I know for a fact there were there were frats. Well, on... Why would I tell you if there was? It's just... Because I, I find that to be one of the fascinating parts of frat Yeah, life. and if I tell you, you're not going to be fascinated. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I don't like your tone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, I got I uh, put under for my appendectomy. Um, and then uh, here's... <laughs> it sounds... It's... I like to that it went from yeah don't do the hazing so I got put down, put under for my appendectomy wow that was a tough but hazing you know what if it wasn't for my buddy across the hall my appendix could have ruptured and he saved my life was he was he a doctor no he just knew he had his appendix removed oh he before. had been he had been through and he's it. like dude he's like it's your appendix and he literally he's like we got he just no questions asked got in his car and drove me to the hospital and were you under like were you into the ER and then under then no I got to the hospital and. I went to school in Champaign, Illinois. There's one big hospital and there's like, there's, there's not surgeons there all the time. So I had to wait for this. <laughs> that, seems, that seems dangerous. So I had to wait for the surgeon to come in. He had to get called in and uh, they couldn't give me any pain meds until he got there. And it was like a solid two hours before he showed wait, up. Wait, why couldn't they give you pain meds? Because if they gave me pain meds, it would alter how I felt when he was examining me. So he had to, oh. yeah. So uh, toughed it out for two more hours. He gave me a few tests. He's like, it's your appendix. Hit him with the morphine. They hit me with the morphine. And then uh, I called my mother and I was like, mom, I was like, uh, I, on morphine, on morphine. <laughs> and I, go, I go, mom, I got to, uh, I got to go to surgery. My appendix is going to get removed. And she's like, what, what, what? She's like, this is a direct, a direct quote from my mom. She goes, ready for this direct quote from my mom. They're not fucking touching you. I'm having a helicopter bring you to Chicago. A helicopter. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, mom, I'll be all right. So uh, they brought me into the OR. They're willing me into the OR. And they gave me something else other than morphine. And they're like, how are you feeling? And I was like, I'm feeling pretty loose. Twilight And they're, and they're, like, they're like, now we're going to give you the good stuff. And I was like, bring it on. And then I remember him uh, just kind of like the, the anesthesiologist looking at me and saying, are you ready? And I was like, yeah. He goes, count it. And I was like, out. <laughs> just, 
woke up in the uh, recovery room. My parents were there. My, my girlfriend at the time was there. All my friends were there waiting for me. But it was amazing. I loved it. I've had, uh, I've been under numerous times. I think I've been under, wait, one, two, three times I've been under. Did you point towards your knee? Did you have a knee thing? Well, no, I, I, I okay, people at home, here's something, uh, f- a fun fact about Jonathan Sadowski. I have bad feet. What? Yeah, I get bone spurs on my on my toes. My grand, oh. my big toes. They're like, not quite a bunion. It's called it's, yeah, but I get a bone spur developed. I have bad joints on my big toe, so they had to uh, remove the bone spur. They had to, like take out some bone. Is and that so- local or is that uh, you're full out? Oh, I'm out. Okay. You're out. Yeah. Although I did wake up with him with a. I woke up with the surgeon using a bone saw on my foot. No. <laughs> the, oh yeah. No. Like, oh yeah. Like bone chips like flying in that there. That is literally my nightmare is that I will wake up and see what they're did doing it, to me. Did it, I remember waking up and seeing him and with the, and there were like bone shards flying off my foot. No. And then, no. And, then and the surgeon just goes, uh, it's, uh, hello. And I had this Asian, uh, anesthesiologist who just looks at me and she goes, no, no, you go night, night. <laughs> that is another direct quote. True story. She says, no, no, you go night, 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 put a mask over my face, and I was out again till the end. That's amazing. And then I broke, I broke my left leg um, while uh, I'm on my way to work. I actually tripped over. I fell down one of the steps in my house and it snapped my, my left leg. And uh, I had to get put – they didn't put a plate in, but I had something called a closed reduction where my, my bone was basically splinted, and they – they basically have one doctor they put me under. They have one doctor grab my ankle. No. Another doctor grab no, no. my knee and pull. Stop it. Till the bone goes back into place and they put a super tight cast on me. Oh. Yeah. It was painful. I feel like it doesn't matter how much they knocked you out. That still hurts. It hurts. It hurts. So yeah. So I've been under three times. Okay. I've been under for wisdom teeth, back surgery, back surgery, back surgery, kidneys, back surgery, back surgery, uh, epidural shot, epidural shot, epidural shot. So over 10 times, wow. over 10 times I've been under to the point where I know how I'm going to react on this stuff and I get to have fun with it. Um, <laughs> what do you mean you get to have fun with it? Because I know how quickly I'm going to go under. Like I know. So you fight it. No, I don't. No, God, no, no, no. I'm, that's the recipe for waking up and seeing them chipping your toe away. I don't want to fight it. Why? Really? I feel like if you're trying to fight it, I, I'm going with it. I'm going into this knowing it's what's like- going to happen. <laughs> Zen in the art of yes. anesthesiology. But it's, it's to me, I treat it like getting off stage where I sit there and it's like, they've given me the light. I'm going to wrap it up. And I try and go out with a joke and try and thank them all for coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of brilliant. Yeah. But it's not very satisfying because it just confuses the doctors. It makes them really confused because they're just used to someone just going out and, or, you know, maybe saying something weird. Then you wake up and you're like, oh, I never got to know if they thought that was funny and now I feel right, weird. Right, 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 right. The weirdest time I woke up, uh, I was, they super looped me up on this one. It was for an epidural shot where they had to go directly into my spine and fill me up with magic fluid. Um, Oof. Yeah. Not, I don't recommend it. I would, Oof. I would not recommend it. So I wake up and I'm still incredibly loopy. And usually I'm, I can realize that I'm loopy and kind of go with it. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> hooked up to a heart monitor. He's just going, ba-deep, ba-deep. That sounds nothing like a heart monitor. Ba-deep. It sounded like the one I was at. Boom, boom. That was like a that, submarine. That, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> they're, they're pinging us. They're, they're close. <laughs> dive, dive. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just hear the, the beep, uh, and uh, I pull over the nurse. I go, hey. You turned into Batman. Apparently. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to me. I said, uh, I said, hey. You hear that? That's four four time. That's rock and roll, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I fear that only musicians are going to get that joke, but it's kind of brilliant. <laughs> Let's rock and roll, baby. <laughs> now, did you like write these down before? No, no, no. That was just like I thought. I. It's not that different from my real life, where I'm like, everyone's going to find this interesting, and then you say it, and people go. What the fuck is that guy talking about? Uh, yeah. And so that was, I was just like, this will be hilarious. Um, and another one, they had just given me the Twilight drug. and they What's were, the Twilight drug? Twilight is where they're- I thought you were making, like when you said Twilight, I thought you were making a reference to the movie. I was oh, like, no, 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 that's no, why no. I just like ignored it. Oh. I was like, I don't know what the fuck that means. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Twilight. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm they, just going to keep, uh, I'm they just gonna keep going. They show you the first Twilight movie and you just fucking fall asleep. Out. You are done. You're like, I don't know why they're going to make more of these. I can't even finish. <laughs> like Twilight, I was like, Geely. <laughs> 
You get to pick your bad movie that's going to knock you what out. What do they give you? Twilight? Nah, Geely. <laughs> Twilight is the, it's, you're not totally asleep. You're not totally awake. It's to kind of relax you and kind of get you ready to be. That's zonked. probably what they gave yeah. me. So uh, they gave it to me and I'm a little loopy. And this was when I was, they were going to do one of the kidney stone things on me like 10 years ago. And they were like trying to tell me how to get on this table. They're like, okay, we need you to slide over from the gurney onto this table. And you're like, just just do it. No, they just keep, they kept like saying all of these like complicated words. And they're like, just get there and go here and then do this. And I went, are you telling me to get my ass on the table? And they're like, yes. And then when I woke up, <laughs> the doctor was there and I went, reality show idea, room full of people waking up from anesthesia, just see what happens. <laughs> That's a big fan on YouTube. That is. You know, is it? Yeah. Well, this was way before that. So yeah. I was ahead of my time. And also, you know, I, I love being put under, and it's weird because I think I was just so loopy when I came to in the middle of the surgery with the, mm-hmm. bones, with the bone saw and the chips flying everywhere. I get very like queasy at the sight of my own blood, which which is weird. Cause I'm like a tough, I'm like, I fancy myself to be a tough guy. But you also watch like videos. You, yeah. When like, we first met, you were trying to show me like eyeball surgery. And I was like, nope. No, nope, see, nope. I, yeah, I can watch that stuff. You can and watch at one other point, blood. Not at yours. one point I, I considered being a doctor and uh, I just loved the field of medicine. This one, I was like really young and <laughs> had a little too much fun in college. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but I, I, I don't mind that stuff. I can watch like I, I've, been in the unfortunate circumstance of being like the first person on the scene for a pretty nasty car accident. And I'm all about like jumping in and helping, you know, I just, I go into this mode where it doesn't bother me like blood, guts, gore, nothing doesn't matter. But myself, (laughs) I mean, I cut, I was working at a bar in college and I cut my thumb while slicing limes and I I literally, my thumb was bleeding and I was just like, here we go. Bye-bye. Like almost fainted. Um, Oh, when they had to change the, the bandage on my... So after I had my first um, my first foot surgery, they I, you go back in a couple weeks later and the doctor changes the bandages and stuff like that. And I'm sitting in a chair and he's just kind of talking to me and stuff like that and I'm answering him. And then I see my foot and I was just like... No. I was like, that's not my foot. That's not, that can't be my foot. And it, was just, it looked like someone took a baseball bat to an eggplant. And I'm like... Oh, God. Yeah, how's that? And then the doctor just goes, you all right up there? <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, and he just looks at me and goes, yeah, I'm going to lay you down. So he like reclines my chair and he goes, yeah, I always know when, when I'm like talking with people and they're fine. And then all of a sudden I ask them like four questions in a row and they don't, there's like, they don't answer any one of them. They're about to go down, you know? But yeah, I can't stand the sight of my own blood. Is it like a disassociation when you watch the other stuff where you're like, that's not me. That's not happening to me. So it, it doesn't bother I don't you? know, man. I think it's some kind of weird Well, oh, That's what I want to get into here. <laughs> Jonathan, this is the primary work we're trying to do today. <laughs> We gotta ask the tough questions. I know this was a quick question. Yeah, quickly solve your problems. <laughs> quick question. <laughs> quick question. Why? <laughs> um. Yeah. I like. It's weird. I I had a another surgery when I I got a a sliver in my my hand, uh, in my knuckle. Like it was a really bad, deep, big sliver like in wood, metal, wood. Oh, okay. And I had to go to a plastic surgeon, and it was kind of like when you, if you bend your index finger, like where, where the finger bends. Yeah. It was in there into the ligament. The knuckle, as we call it. But this is your knuckle. This is also a knuckle. Any well, it's, it's, your, it's, it's like your middle of your phalange. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, the doctor just numbed my hand, and I mean, I, I. No, that's the worst. It was just that's like the numb, worst. numb, 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 <laughs> <laughs> numb, Wait, numb, numb, numb. That's a different thing. Num, num. <laughs> numb, 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 numb. And. Uh, He's like, do you want to see it? And I go, no, take some pictures. I don't want to see it while you're doing it. And afterwards, I was able to look at the pictures and it's fine. But in the moment, if I were to look at that, good chance I would have fainted. Uh, <clears throat> so here on my thumb right here, there's a giant scar. It starts here. It goes down to here. Mm-hmm. It's on the inside of on the, my palm. You see um, this scar. You see this? <laughs> you want to know how I got these scars? Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, I was an idiot as a teenager. I mean... <clears throat> idiot we all are hey you know we're teenagers we're finding out who we are we're right. learning things we're stealing our own presence <laughs> it's fine uh i decided that the best way to channel all of my uh negative energy and well, frustration by cutting yourself uh no was by <laughs> trying to as i called it van damme through panes of glass just just go no you did like not that. yeah so no you did not i did did you just have like random panes of glass laying around oh, well, i went to a school that had many windows <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah. So uh, it turns out if you do it like that really quick, 
you're fine. Uh, if you go through, if you go through with the carry through, you almost lose your entire thumb. Uh, I did one of those, you know, those, I don't know if they still have these in schools, but it's like a pane of glass, chicken wire and a pane. Yeah, of, glass. of yeah. course. So I was like, I'm going to knock out that chicken wire. And I went all the way through, pulled back. Blo- oh, I mean, you did the pullback. Yeah. Oh, but because, well, as I went through it, it took it. So I had to pull back and uh, uh, could look down and immediately saw the bone and the joint. Oh, yeah. And I went, I said, bruh. And uh, I, I was I had uh, in addition to being not intelligent about what to punch, uh, was also a guy who wore a lot of sandals at the time. So, Tava? did you wear Tava? Birkenstocks. Oh boy, yeah. you were a Birkenstock man. So uh, I'm holding my socks. Or no socks. No socks. Never. Just gross. Never. Well, uh, you totally point, wore socks. Point. Yeah. You not did. often. Not often. No, I was a. I was a. Very much just wanted people to see my fucking toenails. I guess I don't know what was wrong with me. You do have nice feet. Oh well. Thank you. That was real creepy. <laughs> so I'm walking. I don't think I've ever seen your feet, by the way. Yeah, I, I would. I would. By that comment, I would. I would guess <laughs> you have not. Uh, so I'm walking. I don't know. I just start walking. I'm like, I gotta go find somebody, and uh, I'm putting pressure on my thumb, and uh, and then my feet keep getting like wet drops on it, and I'm looking up like, oh, is it raining? <laughs> I guess it's raining. I guess it's raining only on my feet. <laughs> and I look down. My whole arm is. Just yeah, red. My feet are red, and that's when I I got uh, the Sadowski woozy where I went. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> and it's I, oh, it's not no. even it's not even the pain. It's just something about the visual, you know. Yeah, especially when it's that much blood, where you're like that. I I, I know I need that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's <laughs> that is not supposed to be on yeah. my shoes. That's the <laughs> that's not an amount I'm comfortable <laughs> parting with. <laughs> even have you given blood? Yes, I have. I see. I gave blood in, in college one time, and, and that's uh, weird too to watch that bag <clears throat> fill up. I don't like it. I gave blood, and I got yeah. I I almost went out with that too. I had to give like a lot of blood for a couple of my surgeries because they were like, if you can give your own blood, it's better yeah. than taking you know somebody else's. So uh, I had to fill up a couple of bags, uh, and they put it on this little swivel table so that it kept circulating. Oh, interesting. And I I kept watching it, and after a while, you go, that is so. Much blood. <laughs> Do you want to hear a funny story? You know what? Me and my buddies. No. <laughs> all right. That's all the time we have. On. Um, me and my buddies in college, because we were so broke. Like, you're just poor when you're in college. Right. We would donate plasma for money. Oh, yeah. They'll pay money. They they... 25 bucks a pop back then. For plasma? Yeah. Plasma is like the clear part, right? Yeah. So you're, it would draw your blood. It would go into a uh, centrifuge. centrifuge and then put it right back in. So <laughs> we then pull out the plasma and give you your dead blood back? Yeah. That's how they do it. I swear, to, I swear to God. Why would you want the old blood? Because you still have blood cells in there. Oh, okay. I thought the plasma was like... <laughs> yeah, the okay, that makes sense. <laughs> <clears throat> that doesn't add up. Yeah, so we would like... I remember for spring break and stuff like that, that's how we got extra cash to take with us to spring break. Plus, <laughs> we less and, blood, you're just wasted. Hammered. <laughs> hammered. So to review. <laughs> to review today. <laughs> I'm always on guard. Always on guard. Uh, you can threaten a hobo with an aluminum bottle. You can. Yeah. Um, neither one of our girls like being scared. Right. Uh, if you're going to propose, don't make it sound like you're breaking up. Um, we both like being put under. It's absolutely a blast and should have its own theme park ride. <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant. <clears throat> and uh, what else? Um, donate plasma if you need extra money. And blood. Yeah. You should also find out what your, lo- what your blood type is. You never know when you'll need it or when someone else will need it. What's your blood type? O negative. I think mine is too. I'm We're blood u- brothers. I am the universal donor. Oh no, I'm the universal taker. Uh, that makes so much sense. That that is exactly <laughs> who we are. To one our one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for t- tuning in to Quick Question. <laughs> Until next time. I'm Jonathan. And I'm Travis. Peace. Bye. Quick question. Don't you wish you had more money for getting drunk with? <laughs> sure, we all do. Do you have pints and pints of delicious blood? Then why not come on to Vaki Vlad's Booze Cruise? We are a coffin-shaped boat, and we will take you out to sea, very far from shore and from prying eyes. We will take your blood. Maybe it's for good cause. You don't know. But if you let us sample the delicious, nutritious nectar that flows through your veins... Maybe we'll give you a beer or two. (laughs) It'll be fun. We are not vampires. I don't know who told you such things. Just get on the boat. 
Vaki Vlad's Booze Cruise. You drink while we drink. <laughs>